We're going to believe for healing miracles, healing from trauma, healing from post-traumatic stress disorder, where it's had an effect in your emotions, where it's had an effect in your physical health, where it's had an effect in your relationships. We're, we're, we're healing from that. Welcome to another episode of Think Like a Champion. This podcast is dedicated to helping you win in every way and enjoy every day. And you are going to win because God has given us every tool that we need to experience victory in our lives, to experience lasting victory in our lives. And it starts in our thinking. As a man thinks, Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks within, so is he. Whatever is on the inside of you is eventually going to come into the outside of you. And for the last couple of weeks, On our Think Like a Champion podcast, we have been fasting from wrong thinking. Now, this is something that God gave me an idea of several years ago and that we've been doing these 40 day fasts from wrong thinking. It's not a fast from food. There's a place for that as God leads you, as your heart leads you, as you feel you need that. But, you know, if you fast from food, but continue to think the same way you used to think before you fasted from food, the fast from food will not make a difference in your life other than you might lose a few ounces or a couple pounds. But the, the r- real change in our lives takes place when we truly fast from wrong thinking because the word fasting from something simply means to abstain from it or to reverse it or to change it. So when we fast from wrong thinking, we are identifying the thoughts that defeat us, the thoughts that limit us, the thoughts that 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 are incorrect about our true identity, because when we when we buy the lies about our identity, it will produce negativity in our lives towards our destiny. But when you dismantle the lies dismantle the mistaken beliefs of your identity and the mistaken beliefs that you've carried, Well, that changes everything. So if you've been joining us in Fasting from Wrong Thinking, thank you. And would you share this with somebody? Tag me on Instagram or submit a testimony. I would love to hear from you. Submit a testimony at um, fastfromwrongthinking.com and you can share it and you can sign up for free. By the way, this is 100 percent free. I will send you an email every day for 40 days. And over that 40 days of dismantling wrong thinking and replacing it with with right thinking, dismantling defeated thinking and replacing it with victory thinking, that's what we're going to do for 40 days. It takes five minutes a day. It's one thought at a time. We're going to attack one thought at a time because thoughts become imaginations. Imaginations become strongholds and strongholds. They have a stronghold on you. So we got to dismantle it from the thought level. Now I'm sharing new content throughout this fast from wrong thinking. There are several new thoughts that I've added to really make sure that we're tuned in to what you're going through and tuned in to what the culture is trying to feed us so that we can break out of this. Break out of the defeated mindsets, break out of the victim mentalities, break out of the limited thinking, break out of the box and into the glorious future God has for you. And remember that a glorious future starts with how we think. Now, I'm going to get into today's content, which is all about healing trauma. And if you're following on fast and wrong thinking, that will have been around day seven or day eight of our. In fact, there's two parts and I want to share each of them with you and I want to pray for you for healing. We're going to believe for healing miracles, healing from trauma, healing from post-traumatic stress disorder, where it's had an effect in your emotions, where it's had an effect in your physical health, where it's had an effect in your relationships. We're 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 healing from that. And first Peter, chapter five, verse seven is foundational verse. It says, pour out all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there, for he always tenderly cares for you. So we're going to pour out our brokenness and pour out our worries and pour out our stress and pour out our trauma, our trauma on Jesus. And he is going to heal us and we're going to leave that trauma with him and he is going to make it disappear. How does he do that? I don't know. He's a miracle man. He is our savior. He is the greatest being in the universe and he is going to make it disappear. Just so follow with me in these steps. Trauma. Remember, trauma is an emotional response to a terrible event. Our traumas internalized become a roadblock to the healing and maturing of our emotions and our mental health. So to remain in that emotion of anxiety, 
to remain in that emotion of stress, to remain in that emotion of shock for a prolonged period of time is exactly where PTSD comes from. And by the way, as we fast from wrong thinking, I have a whole book dedicated to fasting from wrong thinking. And in it, I have many testimonies from people who have gone through this. It really is a therapy that transforms your soul. And um, I've had people that have written me that have said they were completely delivered and healed from PTSD after suffering for years or decades. We've had people healed of physical diseases, emotional uh, de depression, worry, anxiety. Boy, this anxiety is a real big one. And we've been tearing that stronghold, stronghold down in people's lives and people are truly getting free. And the, you know, the curse of unhappiness is something that's getting reversed in people's lives and they're finding real joy. Now, so let's break this down. Uh, one of the primary sources of trauma is emotional abuse. Um, and this is also um, it's further inflamed by physical assault, sexual assault, uh, sudden death of a loved one. See, some things that cause trauma are natural things that just happen, the death of a loved one. But some things are from an immediate uh, forceful entry of something that's invasive into your soul or into your body. So sexual assault, physical assault. Um, these are some of the sources of trauma, witnessing um, your parents fighting and 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 uh, physical abuse and screaming. And we think that's normal sometimes in families. And sadly, it is normal in many families. But we need to we need to make it abnormal by healing from the trauma so we don't pass it down to our children and our children's children. Now, some of the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder and trauma is uh, being easily startled, feeling tense, being on guard all the time, always on edge, having difficult con having difficulty concentrating, which sounds like me a lot of days. How about you having difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, feeling irritable and and having anger and aggressive outbursts, engaging in reckless behavior. Now, I know this is a description of every teenager in the world today. It's a description of every adult in the world today. These symptoms, that's why we need to get to the root of our trauma so that we can truly live healthier lives. Um, so here's how we have to do. We have to change it from the inside out. Now, listen, our foundational verse for this, for my life, for our ministry, our Think Like a Champion, our Champion Youth Revival, our Hype Young People Revival, our church life, um, all, of, all of it is rooted and founded on this verse in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. I want to read it to you in the Message Bible. And it says, For it is only in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. It's only in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. Part of the path to healing trauma is to get busy with your purpose. So he, he tells us that it's only in Christ in Ephesians 1 11 that we find out who we are. So now who we are is our identity and only in Christ we find out who we are. Trauma has disturbed, disrupted and deformed your identity. Trauma deformed my identity. Trauma undermines our identity and trauma damages the soul so that the true identity is mistaken. Our true identity is is hidden. Our true identity is is broken and healing that will launch you into your God given purpose, which is your God given destiny. So when you think about it in this verse, Ephesians 1 11, for it is only in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. Trauma disguises who we really are. Our problems disguise who we really are. Your problem is not your identity. Your problem is not who you are. You might be dealing with depression. You might be dealing with alcohol addiction. You might be dealing with some other force that is coming against you, but that is not who you are. Who you are is a son or daughter of God in Christ Jesus. Now, if you're not um, open or familiar with the Bible 
and how the Bible says, in, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. If you have never been introduced to that new you, let me introduce you to that new you. The Bible says that anyone who believes that Jesus is the son of God, that person becomes a child of God. John chapter one, verse 12, to as many as received him, to them he became, to them they became children of God. To, to whoever received him, they became children of God, John 1, 12. So he, and he, he gave us the power to become his children. So the moment you believe in his, that Jesus is the son of God and Jesus is risen from the dead, at that moment, you are what the Bible calls born again. You might be born again without even having known that terminology. You might have been born again without even knowing that just believing that Jesus rose from the dead and that he's the son of God. Just that is what it means to be born again. It's as simple as that. Or you might have just been a religious person all your life or a godly person all your life, but, but never truly been born again. So just being a godly person is not what it is, not the same thing as being born again. Non Christian people are often behave more godly than Christian people do sometimes. So becoming a Christian is a miracle from God, simply receiving his blood sacrifice as the foundation of your life and receiving his blood as the forgiveness of your sins. And you are at that moment a child of God living and acting like a child of God is a process, but becoming one is an immediate miracle the moment you receive him. OK, so if you haven't received Jesus in your life, pray right now with me before we go any further. Why not do it now? All the angels in heaven are waiting for you. God's waiting for you. Uh, there's a host of of test of people that have had testimonies before you. They're waiting for you. Those who have gone ahead of us are waiting for you. Your loved ones in heaven are waiting for you. The people in your life today, the best people in your life are waiting for you to make that step and receive him. Why don't we do that right now? Let me just lead you in this simple prayer and pray this with us. And if you know somebody that needs to hear this, send this to them. Just pray. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus is the son of God. Pray that out loud. I believe Jesus is the son of God. I believe he died for me and he rose from the dead. From this moment forward, I'm a child of God. You say, can it be that easy? It was hard. All the hard work was what Jesus did, dying on the cross and rising from the dead. The easy part is for us to simply believe that and receive that. So, yes, that's all it takes because it took him everything. Now it takes you just receiving him. Whew. If you prayed that prayer, let me know. Share it on our in, in the chat or share it by sending us a testimony, letting us know, reach out to us on our website, reach out to, to us through our podcast here. Any way that you can find to reach us, reach us. All right. Now, how do we heal trauma? The next step in healing trauma is we have to accept the hard work of healing. It's Jesus paid for our healing, but it takes work to face what created trauma in our lives, because a lot of us have um, stuffed it down. We've 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 kind of ignored it or thought that it was gone, that, that it had gone away when it hadn't. I think we all wish it never happened. But the greater thing and the, the, the thing that will that you'll be happy about is that you took the time to work on yourself to be healed of trauma. And how do we do that? We have to admit it. First of all, we have to name what it is. What it, where did it come from? Were you abused as a child? I'm not saying that we need to go back uh, and just get underneath the table somewhere in, in a, you know, in a, in some sort of pre uh, pre teenage years where we just crawl up in a ball and, and, and weep over our past and over our mistakes and over what people have done to us. But we do need to face it. And Jesus said to the man who was demon possessed, what's your name? He got him to tell him his name, because if you name something, now you are facing it. Now you're ready to deal with it. Now you're ready to overcome it. Like everything, you have to name it in order to 
conquer it. You have to know what your enemy is. You have to name what your enemy is. Is it abuse? Then name it. You know what? I was abused as a child. Was it, you know, your parents? Yeah. You know, I felt trauma from when they got divorced or when they fought or when they, um, when, when they failed me. Whatever it is, you've got you've to name it. Then you've got to feel it, reveal it, and then you'll heal it. Acknowledge your pain. Acknowledging it is not the same as identifying with it. Identify where it came from, where it occurred. That's the way you name it. That's the way you frame it. And that's the way you tame it. And if we could go back and just identify where that trauma came from and realize that Jesus was there with us then, even though we didn't feel him, even though we might not have known him, he was there with us then. If you would just open your heart up to him, because I believe that the healer, Jesus, is going to heal you today in your deepest place. The sins that we've all committed, they've been washed away, but the healing is in the deepest, the deepest part of you. And what we need to do in order to feel it, reveal it and heal it, we have to begin to look at the Bible in a different way than the way that we've looked at it before. We have to see the Bible as a cure, not as a command. Now, there are important commands in the Bible, but we can't see the Bible as a rule book of commands. We have to see it as a cure. And as our soul cures, obedience to God becomes a reflex of a healthy soul. We have to start realizing the Bible is like a medicine chest. It's a medicine cabinet. It's a hospital. It's a trauma center. It really is all of those things. It's a recovery center. The Bible is a cure. It's a scalpel to delicately open up the soul and create a path or a roadmap for the soul to be healthy and healed. We have to see the Bible as a cure. We have to see the promises of God as a cure. We have to see it that our relationship with God is a cure. Christianity and a, re a real relationship with God was never meant to be a crutch. A crutch, is, a crutch just means that you're still wounded, but you have something to help you along while you remain wounded for the rest of your life. That's a crutch. Christianity is not a crutch, it's a cure. It, you don't need a crutch because you're not going to remain wounded the rest of your life. You need a cure. And the blood of Jesus and the love of God, this is your cure. So we have to go to God like anything. We have to go to God when it comes to our trauma, when it comes to our post-traumatic stress disorder. Take that to God. Say, Lord, I have this condition. I have this trauma. I don't know where it came from. Help me to discover where it came from. Help me to heal from it, even if I don't know where it came from. It does. It has caused PTSD in me. What that person did to me does trigger me. See, be honest with God. If, as you're honest with him, you don't have to come to him with a health, with a healed life. Come to him with your broken life and let him begin to heal it. Then we need to flood our minds. The next step. All this, by the way, is found in our fast and wrong thinking that you can get a copy of every day, a brand new email, absolutely free, sent from me to you so that you can follow these steps to dismantle trauma and heal it, dismantle um, defeated mentalities and start winning, dismantle unforgiveness and fear and anxiety and worry and begin to be victorious and have peace. And this world is striving for peace, but it only can come from God and having peace with God, and then you'll have the peace of God. But we have to flood our mind with healing verses. Let me give you a few of them. Psalm chapter 12, verse 25, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Notice, anxiety causes depression. God knew that thousands of years ago before any clinical psychologist or psychiatrist discovered that. God knew that, that's why he said anxiety 
in the heart of a man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. So what is what is it that we combat? What is the weapon we combat anxiety and depression with a good word? A good word makes it glad. A good promise from God makes it glad. It makes your heart glad. You have to attack the thoughts of anxiety and depression with a good word which will make you glad. What is a good word? A good word is that, he, for example, by his stripes we're healed. That's a good word. God is on your side. That's a good word. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's a good word. All the promises of God are good words. And as we flood our mind with these good words, it makes us glad. If you're not glad, if you're not in a somewhat regular state of gladness, I don't mean that you're cheesy. I mean that you are in a consistent habit of being happy or glad. Though there are tough days, though there are tough weeks, those, though there are tough seasons. In general, your heart is glad if it's not. If you will flood your mind with good words, promises from God's word. Your heart will have no choice in the matter. It will become glad. I wish we could see that the mind and the brain is the boss. The mind and the brain is the CEO of your life. The body and your emotions are your servants, your employees, call it whatever you want. But the mind, the, the brain is the boss. The emotions and the body has to simply obey the boss or it's going to get fired. And too often we we just we don't realize that it is. When you put healing in, when you put good words in your soul, flood your mind with these promises. Your heart will become glad. This is the, this is a secret to to any consistent thing in your life. You've got to flood the mind, flood the mind, flood the mind. What do doctors say? Flush your body with with water, flush your body with good vitamins, flush your body with good food, with good health. Health will come on the other side of what you put into your body that's healthy. In the same way, emotional health will come as you flood your system with with healthy promises, healthy thoughts. That's what fasting from wrong thinking is all about. That's what think like a champion is all about. All right. Here's another great promise that will bring gladness to your heart. Jeremiah 17, verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved for you are my praise. Or how about this? God says, for I will restore health unto you and I will heal you of your wounds, says the Lord in Jeremiah 30, verse 17. How about this one in Psalm 147? He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Psalm 147, verse three, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Who is this who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds? He talks about it in Psalms hundreds of years, thousand years before Jesus comes. But who is he talking about? Jesus is the healer of broken hearts. This is this is our next point. Jesus is the healer of trauma and the traumatized heart. Jesus himself said, and this will be my last thought for us today. And we'll pick this up on exactly right where we leave off here on our next podcast. But Jesus himself said in Luke four, verse 18 and 19, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the gospel to the poor and to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus is the healer. I want you to say that out loud with me. Jesus is the healer. In fact, say it. Jesus is my healer. Say that out loud. Jesus is my healer. I want you to know and we'll get into this next time. But when it says Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he's anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. That word brokenhearted comes from the word traumatized heart traumatized. It's the same root word, broken hearted. Everybody knows what it's like to have a broken heart. How can you mend a broken heart? The BG said right years ago. 
uh, everybody's experienced a broken heart, but they don't realize that a broken heart is simply another name for a traumatized heart. Something traumatic has happened and it's traumatized your heart. And these two things are one in the same. When Jesus heals you, your broken heartedness, when he heals your traumatized heart, your emotions become healthy. And that healing is both instant and a process. It's not one or the other. It's both. All right. So I want to lead you in this declaration. I want you to say this out loud. Say God is my father and he hears my prayer and he heals my heart. Come on, say that he hears my prayer and he heals my heart. I will not remain stuck any longer in trauma. Say that I will not remain stuck any longer in trauma. Trauma will not remain stuck in me. Trauma will not remain stuck in me. Jesus heals the broken hearted. Say that Jesus heals the broken hearted and I receive his healing today. Say this too. He restores me to health and he heals me of all my wounds. He restores me to health and heals me of all my wounds inside and out. I am set free from trauma beginning today in Jesus name. Amen. All right. We're going to put a comma by that and we're going to pick this up right here when we left off. Thanks for joining me on Think Like a Champion. You can go to fastfromwrongthinking.com. Join my fast from wrong thinking. It's absolutely free. It's not a fast from food. It's a fast from wrong thinking. It's 40 days, 40 thoughts. We're going to tear each one of them down one by one. And if you want a hard copy book or journal, visit fastfromwrongthinking.com and you can you can find our merchandise there to help in your journey. Also want to invite everybody to give. Thank you for those who already give. You can go to lifechangerschurch.com slash give. This podcast and this ministry is supported not by trying to be famous, but trying to pay it forward for others. Let's pay it forward. Would you take a moment and give whatever gift you can give to pay it forward? If you believe in this message and you want to help get this out to more people, go to lifechangerschurch.com slash give and every gift counts. Every gift matters. And if it matters to you, it matters to God. All right. Until next time, let's keep fasting from wrong thinking and it'll keep us thinking like a champion. I'll see you then.